Jan, welcome. Great to have you. It's very good to be with you. Um, so to Steve's point, you're not looking for cuts in the coming year, right? We're not looking for cuts because we're not looking for a recession. Our expectation, our baseline is that the economy continues to grow and the adjustment process in the labor market continues, but without a recession. And I think the hurdle for them to cut in a non-recessionary environment with inflation still above the target, I think is going to be relatively high. I mean, I certainly have a inflation forecast that c clearly comes down. We're below the FOMC medians, but I do think whether the economy goes into a recession or not makes a big difference. And the consensus view is that there will be a recession right. next year. And, and you've done some reports on just how below consensus you are on that front, right? On recession yeah, risk. On That's recession right. Risk. So the, the, the consensus there, depending on which survey you look at, is sort of 60, 65 percent probability. We're at 35 percent, which is not a low number, but obviously still below 50. Well, your number is a lot lower than uh, that of the man who runs Goldman Sachs. Um, and I'm sure you have some interesting conversations with David Solomon. Uh, I, I mentioned that, Jan, because I'm curious how you do account for CEO confidence or lack thereof. Well, uh, and if there is a way to do that, because obviously these decision makers do seem to be more in the camp of recession and perhaps are pulling back, in fact, creating that very outcome. Well, consensus uh, among, I would say, CEOs, but also households, is you know relatively negative consumer confidence you know did pick up somewhat at least in the in the conference board survey the michigan numbers are also quite low ceo confidence is low uh, you know clearly we're in a difficult environment we're still in the middle of a difficult adjustment process so it's not surprising that there are a lot of concerns and 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 negative views the question i think is you know is it ultimately going to qualify as a recession in uh, you know, in, in terms of whether the National Bureau of Economic Research sees a significant and substantial decline in, in overall economic activity. So what do you, we're, we're, we're a little bit What low. do you identify then as the key things that you're seeing that perhaps others who are obviously a bit more bearish on the outcome are viewing differently? I'd say two things in particular. One, real household disposable income is now growing. It was falling sharply early in 2022. Now it's growing, in part because of lower headline inflation, which Steve talked about. And number two, there is, of course, a sizable drag from tighter financial conditions and tighter monetary policy. But we think the lags are actually relatively short. Financial conditions have already tightened substantially. The biggest impact of that, maybe one and a half to two percentage points of drag, we think is actually occurring right now. And as I look forward into 2023, you know, even with additional hikes, we have an, an, an extra 75 basis points of hiking here, similar to the Fed's forecast. I think the, the drag from financial conditions will be smaller. Really? So those who argue, oh, there's so much in the pipeline, just you wait, hasn't really hit us yet. You think that's a fallacy? We don't, we don't uh, buy into that. And if we look at the lags between you know, monetary policy and financial conditions, those are very short. In fact, they're kind of negative because often markets anticipate what monetary policy is going to do. And then the lag between financial conditions and GDP growth, it's a couple of quarters by our estimates. Well, and well, I'm, that, I'm curious. That is, well, again, that is a very important uh, question. It is.